everyone. Welcome to another Adobe Live here from the UK. And guess what? We're back. It's myself, Tony Armour, joined by the amazing Gavin Campbell. How are you doing, Gavin? How are you doing, sir? Captain Tony, good to be with you and the team. Ah, Lieutenant Gav. Perfect. <laughs> yes, it is good to be here with you. It is perfect. Well, as usual, if you're watching on YouTube, that's kind of okay. You know, you might want to do that, but you can't get involved in the chat. If you want to chat to myself, Gavin, or other members of the community, where you need to be is at behance.net slash Adobe Live. You can meet some you can meet some of these amazing people that we have in the chat, such as the incredible Sandrine Basquer, uh, the incredible Tim in the background. The amazing Sean, Guten Tag, Sean, and also Guten Tag, Andreas. And we've got plenty of others in here joining, waiting. See, there's Oliver in here, Gareth, Steve, Kiora, Steve. All these great people waiting to see what we're up to today, Gavin. So tell me, tell me, tell me, because you're the driver on this one. What well, are we up to? Today, the plan is to yes. go with the theme of natural beauty. So it's kind of mixing in an image of something that you think is beautiful, that I think is beautiful, with yeah. nature. So natural beauty, that's pretty much it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on a double exposure today. Mm. Yeah. I'm gonna work so am I. Oh, really? Yeah. So guys, just so you know, we didn't plan that. That was actually a genuine shock moment. We didn't plan that. We, you know. I can prove yeah. it. We've even got it on text. We've got it on text when we were talking about what we were doing. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. said the theme. Yeah. You said, let's do a theme of natural beauty. Attribute. Yeah. Now, I'm that's, top that's... interested to yeah. see what you make. Okay. If we just pop my screen up just for a second. All right. Let's see what you make of my sketch for today. So there we are. I've got a profile here of a beautiful woman. I've got several to choose from. Yeah. And I'm going to do a double exposure with some forest and some mountains and some people mm. by a lake. And then I'm going to augment that with some shape stuff to make it all mud and lag. Not far off my idea, to be fair. I've got some oh. got some trees and I've got some lakes. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds. Yeah, there you go. That's that's what they say. Well, and, and actually, the, the, the image that I've got, she's actually facing the same direction as yours, to be fair. Sweet. I could flip mine and then we could post them together on Discord later That's on. That's right. Yeah, all right. Well, let's do that then. Yeah. Excellent. Well, fantastic. Well, of course, you are you are like the main guest at the minute. So maybe we should start with you then, Gavin, and I'll pop in okay. with mine as we go along. So I've got to find some stuff off the of stock anyway. So all right, cool. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get on with this. I've got this image here that I'm gonna mash up and transform so again yeah this is the stock image i've got let me um just zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that clearly the goal in me well wow. is to i'm going to get one more room i'm going to get this image here with this this uh, this lake and these trees and mountains in the background i'm going to mix this in blend it in Sweet lady here. So let's just unlock that layer there. And I'm going to select this lady here. Do a quick, quick select the magic wand. I'm going to invert that, create a new layer. Doesn't have to be perfect at this point, that will do. And then I'm going to. Already got that there. Let's go back again. Let's get this layer here. Yeah. And zoom out. Let's rotate it slightly. And get the angle that I'm looking for. So let's see. Right, I'm going to flip that over to the other side. Horizontal flip. Cool. Let's increase the size of the image there. And then I'm going to bring down the opacity 
So I can just get an idea of where I want it positioned on my body. Perfect. Nice. So, I reckon, in fact, let's rotate that back. Let's say that is looking good. Yeah, okay. So, now that I've positioned it, I can increase the opacity again. And I'm going to press control highlight the shape of her head and then I'm going to create the mask. Nice. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna have slight different techniques, which is interesting because there's like, there's more than one way to do double exposure to be fair. Oh always. There's always yes. more than one way. But I'll be interested to see how you do yours. But yeah. I'm gonna drag this layer above and hide that for now. Do you know what? That's pretty good for it. In fact, what <laughs> I'll do is I'll just press Alt and then create a mask to hide her face. I'm going to paint areas back in, you see. Yeah. Paint areas back in. And what I'll probably do is I'll, uh, let me see, I might just get rid of the saturation and bring it down a bit. I was thinking to do a black and white one, I'm not sure. But for now, I'll bring it down. And I'll just clip it to that layer there. Just in case you want to bring some colour back in. And then, yeah. what I'm going to do is get a layer blend. Uh, in, fact, in fact, let me just hide the mask, actually. Uh, let's delete that mask. Let's just do. Let's check these layer blends. Hmm. Cool. And we've got some more of our regulars in the chat. Hi, Umicorn. How you doing? It's very good. So. Yo. I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead, okay, let's bring the opacity down slightly, and let's take out the saturation nose more. Bring the brush right down, go to the mask layer, and let's see what I can paint back in how it looks. I'm just going to bring in the lips and bring in some of the nostrils as well. And let's see where the eyes are. Let's bring in some of the eyes as well. I'm going to go back. Getting this. Go on. Go on, go on. No, I was just going to say, I'm just getting the shape of mine sorted out first before I go anywhere else with this. All right, so let's go and disable that mask to see how it looks. Hmm. Let's try that again. So let's see. I'm going to increase the brightness. Background image there. Play with that. At the same time, I'm going to save it as I always do, just in case. You never know. Let's save this quickly. Let's go here, save that there. Create a background layer and it's going to be a cream background layer. So, let's go back actually. Let's change that slightly. Oh man, I can't believe how synchronized we are on our ideas. <laughs> you know, <I'm> <laughs> Well, all the time you're doing this at the moment, I'm just thinking, oh man, I need to change that. I was going for a sort of cream <laughs> background. <laughs> okay. So. You know, hey ho. There you go. Yeah. That's 
to get that lamb off there. Create a normal mask. Increase the brush. Oh man, they're talking about Electroset now. Crazy. Jackie did a project like this at college a million years ago by hand for a video cover. That was hardcore. Double X by hand. The, um, <laughs> Sean's talking about my branding. Sean, like yourself, right? There's a bit more of my forehead on display than perhaps I'd, I'd ideally like. Yeah. And with the lights here, I'm getting a super hot spot just there. <laughs> So that's the only reason. And you can imagine that in here, there's a lot of these hats. <laughs> there's a whole box over there. So, when I meet you all in purpose, on, on purpose, in person, I'm going to give some away. All right, so. Just go with the highlights. See for it <laughs> Steve uh, Steve Kosterboom in the chat saying hey in uni the graphic students came across from us journalists had a rock band and their big crowd pleasing song was Letraset epic <laughs> did you ever have to use Letra I, I'm kind of guessing you're too young really Gavin but did you ever have to use Letraset I didn't know mate sorry no? can't relate no you can relate in the chat. Any veterans in the chat? Oh man, there's a there's a few uh, there's a few old timers in here, mate. So you know, kind of kind of all right on that score. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Think. Zoom out a bit. Now I'm going to get rid of the colour on that. And saturation right down. And then I'm going to go grey. Okay. Two. And some more shadows. Cut it back in later on. So, where are we now? So, let's get rid of that background there. Do, 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 do. Nice. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, where are we going now? Let me delete some more of that. Hair. You get on me. Yeah, good. I'm just uh, I'm just black and whiting my uh, my picture here. I want to black and white because uh, right. that's going to form the main basis for the, the the technique. My preferred technique for doing that. And so what I've done is, as I've got this layer here as a smart object, I can apply the black and white adjustment so that I can go back to it later. Oh. That's kind of that. I don't know if you've ever tried tried doing that, maybe with a smart object, but great idea when you've got an adjustment like that because you can blend it off, which of course you can do if you do it ordinarily. Right. But you've only got one chance to do it here. You can do whatever, and you can get some mental effects wow. um, by doing, you know, just changing the blend mode of that adjustment. Yeah, like so. It's some crazy, crazy stuff. In there, you can put a copper tone kind of thing, which I've got now. No detail in the hair there, so I wouldn't personally use it, but 
you know, for some effects, you might do it. So it's very handy. Mm. I like it very much. And all those adjustments became non-destructive without adding an adjustment layer. Ciao. See. Yeah. Be really good. Be nice if each one had its own mask as well. But there you go. Anywho. So I'm going to grab some uh, stuff from Adobe Stock. I'm going to create a new window. I'll bring that down onto onto this screen. Make this more crop friendly. Uh, just here, so. Let's see. I'm going to play with the color gradients just for now. Let's create a group. Gone for audio. <laughs> Oops. Note to self, when searching, <laughs> when searching on Adobe stock in front of people, don't just like and automatically go to audio, which is like, I spent all day uh, yesterday pulling out audio for another project. Adobe stock did well out of me yesterday, 59 tracks, I think I pulled down. Oh, that reminds me, I need to jump in your Discord, you know. I, I, I will do it later, actually. I need to jump yeah. In Adobe, Adobe Live, yeah? Adobe mm. UK. Yes. Let's jump in. Participate. Pretty sure that's right. Mm. Mm. I set mine up uh, just after we last spoke, actually. Yeah? Yeah. What, your own Discord server? Or, or, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. I set it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Now, let me see. I have an action to make a photo into sketches, mask it and have a full sketch and half real. Cool effect. Ooh, curious about that action. Now, although I did create one earlier, I'm gonna I'm going a different direction. I'm yeah. Diversifying. At least you freed me up to use the cream background I wanted to use. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah, it was actually cream, but I thought, you know what? Very generous of you, sir. Yeah. Mm. 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 I think we're going to change our search here to mountains, forest, and lake. Let's see if I can do it in one one hit. Okay. So. See. Tim has quite wisely given you screen dominance, so it means I can expand mine out now. Ooh, that's good. Orange. So. Mm. How are you going on? All right, it's looking good. Yeah. We've both got waterways in uh, in what we're doing. Yep. Both got, you know, it's very good. I'm going to drop this into a library the one I'm choosing just here, and then I can pull that in and decide if I'm going to license it later on. Mm -mm. Let's have a look when it arrives. Let's just see which library it went to. Or maybe it's going to arrive any minute. Come on, library, do stuff. Fetch me things. If not, I'll just go and download you. <laughs> I'll license it anyway. 
Do do do. Oh, I've got a copy if the library doesn't kick in. I've had a couple of issues in my library of late. Mm -hmm. Delete this part of the hair at the back. Yep, that bit there. Right, let's delete that. Get rid of that. I'm going to add in, I'm going to add in some ink. Yeah. Yeah, back. This is where I'm going left now. Right. Yeah. I think I'm just going to, I'm going to take your trick there, of downloading the, of dropping the opacity to get the, you know what, oh, it's so lucky if that works there. Nice. Nice. Some of that forest there. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now it's going to be a case of rinse and repeat, copy and paste and right, let's, let's get some more of this ink in there nice nice, nice. use the side of that and uh, let's see let's see let's see like it Multiply, darken, mix and blend, mix and blend. Mm. Right, let's mask out what I don't want. Get rid of that. Yeah. Ooh, that's different now. Okay, let's see. All right, let's turn the color around that. Colorize it. Let's make that. Zero. Yeah. Let's leave that there, duplicate that. Rotate it around. Let's put it back. Nice. With mine, uh, I've got my layer in. I've got it. Um, I just turn off the layer underneath, or actually just turn off the filter. Here, I guess, or the blend mode that would work. Uh, so I'm bringing in part of this. I'm going to have to bring in something else um, to do what I need to do. But I just set this to overlay. Uh, which, by the way, if you want a shortcut for doing that, just make sure you've got the selection tool active or the move tool. Shift and Alt or Option and O for Overlay. There you go. Because almost all of them have got a shortcut. Grooving. So did you do your colour? I missed it. Did you do your colour with a solid colour layer? 
Is that how you did yours? I didn't. Know. You mean the, no? actual, the overall effect? The green? Yeah, the, the background colour that you were going to use. Oh, the background colour. Solid colour. It is solid, yeah. It is, yeah. yeah. It is. Although, yeah. I want the gradient map to add something else to it later on, but yeah, so let's put in some more ink. Do, 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 do. That's not going to work like that. So let's grab that mask. Right, so. You know, artwork always is completely different when you go away for an hour and come back. Oh man, it does. Yeah, definitely. It's like your brain tells you what's right and wrong. You yeah. One of the ways you can you can do that, I guess, is to go ahead and flip it. So if you use the rotate tool right. and then flip it by like 180. And then go and have a do something crazy like have a mouthful of coffee. Like, yeah, this yeah. is pretend because this is empty. <laughs> The amount of time I've done a piece of art and I've been happy with it, come back an hour later and I'm disgusting with it. It just looks completely different. It, yeah, it just works like that, you know. But I mean, the main thing is, is that you then deal with it. You don't just, yeah. you know, you don't leave it because yeah. you care. That's right. I mean, I can see uh, immediately. I can see things that I'm going to need to address on this, but I'm going to work my way around it yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. as I go. So, and then I'm just going to reset the view. And then I can carry on from there. So I think I'm going to have to resolve a couple of things inside of this group uh, here. Let's just try to get that working. Because well, I'm still in a field. There we go. Oh. Right, it's time to bring in the leaves. Let's get some leaves in here. Right, let's fix that in a way you want. See. I've also just decided, sorry mate, oh, I'm into uh, no, 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 I was just going to ungroup the two layers here that I've grouped for effect. And I've decided that what I'm going to do instead is turn them into a smart object because that gives me a bit more latitude to do what I want to do. So let me go ahead. That's better. Then I can go and work on that as a separate image, of course, because effectively it is. So I can double click on it, go into that, and then do the resolving that I want to do. All right. So. <clears throat> How's it going? Just getting the leaves. I'm going to add some leaves to the 
kind of where the earring will go, that sort of area. Yeah. Nice. Next time, blend it up. Around, so let's have a look. All right, so let's come like that. <clears throat> More like that. Tidy. Say again. I'm just tidying up my layers. Keep it tidy. Let's put that there. Okay. Do you know what? I actually created an animated version of this prior to this. The the, the, walk, the lake was actually moving. I was, I was really impressed with myself. Oh, nice. Oh, what? So in your practice piece? Yeah. It, yeah, it's a, a late. I went to Premiere Pro and I, I did it in Photoshop, but I found it easy to do in Premiere Pro to kind of mask out the lake area and then nice. just it over. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm just doing a bit of cloning here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a negative uh, clone. So basically flip something over. I'm going to try and bring in. And these strands I might end up painting these in right, right. Well, it's worth a go do you ever find that sometimes you think oh, I'll do it that way and then you completely change your mind <laughs> afterwards 110 <laughs> percent yeah I think we're all like that but I think yeah I'm gonna brush those in I'm gonna create a brush layer <clears throat> And make sure I've got a nice super small brush, like one pixel. Let's have a quick catch up on the chat. I don't know, let's see what we're doing. Oh, it's been busy. Jason Levine would be proud <laughs> of, of the forest looking like a beard or resembling. Paul Charney made a wee project like this with forest and whatnot, then added in a short video of birds taking off to the branches and made it a gift. There you go. Yep. Tim's saying a bit of turbulent displace on the smoke slash ink could probably also look nice. Yep. There you go. Top tips from Tim. You Tim? Tim, Tim. Our Tim. Our Tim. It's a new radio segment here in the UK. Mm. You have to be a certain age to kind of remember that, really. I think you met a great radio host, Tony. The voice room, mate. Oh, thank you, mate. I have done, I have dabbled in that area. Yeah. Amongst the many other things that, yeah, early on with the podcast um, thing, I used to have a music podcast. Oh. And uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of a band called Black Lab, but they yeah. actually really liked, they did think that they did part of the theme to, um, 
the original Tobey Maguire uh, Spider-Man uh, movie. And they they had a new single coming out and they asked if they could debut it on my podcast, which was kind of cool. Because they're like, you know, they've done stuff for loads of different movies. Yeah, yeah. You've, probably, you've probably heard their stuff without knowing who they are. It's quite possible. But yeah, did that. Just get fan mail. <laughs> Have you still got the podcast though? I've still got the episode somewhere. They'll be in the archive. Mm. But I don't do it anymore, no. The last podcast that it was with Dave Clayton um, on uh, Vectogenarians, but we don't do that anymore. It's never coming back either, so uh, we've abandoned that project. It is gone. Dave has another podcast to all of his own now. See, I don't know. Do you fancy doing one? Never thought of it, to be honest. <clears throat> a music podcast. Never thought of it. Although people do request, I've had a few requests to have a music yeah. on Discord. There you go. I've got a little bit of stuff to resolve just down here, which I think I'm going to come back to in a wee bit. I think. Something that we need fixing. So it's just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Leaves, 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 leaves. Need some more ink. Let's get some more ink. Back in. I'm going to go back in, and it's the background that's causing the problem, but I'm trying to go over it with. Uh, Actually, a bit of D and B would probably be the best way to do it. Yeah, my bestie actually in Nottingham, my bestie Daryl, still t actually he's not in Nottingham anymore. Thinking about even Derbyshire, um, he still takes the Mickey out of me for one particular day. I was introducing a Canadian band called Lift, and it was in the way int I introduced it. He still teased. I did it. I was being ironic. You remember Smashy and Nicey, the DJs? Oh, the spoof yeah. DJs, Harry Enfield and Paul Whitehouse. Anyway, I did it in that style. And oh man, he, he, <laughs> I deserved what I got for it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but he still, to this day, still gives me the griefies about it. He still <laughs> throws it at me. Well, yeah, so... I liked Lyft, they were cool. They were cool. Uh, I'm going to add a new layer onto mine and I am going to access the options for it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay like so. And I'm going to say fill it with an overlay neutral colour. Do you use this technique for dodge and burn? I don't, you know. All oh, right, okay. So this is a this is a this is the one time where I do actually like this dialogue, and I normally call it something like D and B, so that I can see it oh. uh, in my layer stack, and I also normally colour it as well, okay, so that I can see that it's a dodge and burn layer. Right. But if you choose one of these blending modes in the comparative group here, um, the uh, then you can is it comparative that group? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, fill with an overlay neutral colour, and so it gives you this. Completely, because grey is absolutely neutral in the overlay blend mode. Right. Yeah. And then you can use it to dodge and burn selectively. So at the moment, I've got my burn tool selected. And I'm after just mitigating this shadow area that's in the background that is upsetting my blend. Interesting. So I can just come along and do this. And it quickly fixes in theory that again this is one of those things that i'm going to need a larger softer brush and lower opacity what am i at the minute 50 percent exposure kind of all right and there we go i want it to max out anyway and then i can fix those hairs and whatever else shortly there you are it's a quick a quick fix Stuff. Those things I'm going to do, I'm going to come back to the trees and whatnot shortly. 
can do a bit of shape player goodness. I'm going to get the ellipse tool. I'm going to choose a magenta corner fill. So I think I'll do that from here. Let's go all the way to 300 degrees in the hue. There we go. And then just change the uh, saturation of that. And the brightness. Do you use numbers that much when you're doing your stuff? No. You just do it do it by eye. Oh, oh man, I'm, I'm an eye guy. I'm an eye guy. I'm an eye guy. That sounds like a new Apple product. Yeah. <laughs> eye guy. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like something. It sounds like I robot. Check out your eye guy. Are you an iPhone man or a Samsung man? Oh, iPhone all the way. I like security. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm neither. I'm a Blackberry man. Imagine that. Oh. You and my wife should hang out. She'd form a club. She's she got Blackberry. <laughs> no, no. She likes, she's got an iPhone, but she, she still moans here and that. Blackberry, la, la, la. Blackberry, this, that, and the other. Yeah. Yeah. The old Android, Blackberry Android, so that's touch screen and, and keypad. Nice. Um, that's the both the, the, the sort of the, 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 the Sweet. I think that works where it is. I think I'm going to mask that as well with the uh, with the shape of this layer. Mm -hmm. Just crop this image slightly. That. Oliver found a Blackberry in his cupboard this morning. Oliver, I want to know how old it is. <laughs> yeah, and which Blackberry model is it as well? Interesting to know that. Yeah. Sandrine was asking me if I could just do it with a simple brush tool, low opacity, low flow in black and white. Yeah, I could. Absolutely, instead of dodge and burn. Um, probably could, yeah. It's, um, oh, it's an ancient 8220 Pearl Flip one, phone one. Pearl Flip, wow. Yeah. Wow. There you are. Hey, uh, <laughs> McCorn still has a Motorola Flip phone somewhere. Do you know some of yeah, these? This... Some of these phones are going for big prices on eBay. You know. Oh no! What is with that? Yeah. Is it because of, it's because of the base price of gold or something? Is it? I don't, I don't know. What's the deal? I've, I, I, had a, I had an old Nokia flip phone. I think it was the eighty-eight ten. I think. Yeah. It's flip one, and I, it's going for about five hundred pound on on eBay. Madness. Yeah. Just madness. I'm going to add some more shapeage in to mine, I think. So. Let's see what I've got in the way of custom shapes that I want if there's anything in terms of lines or whatever. Mm. Oh, quick, shifty. Shifty. <laughs> it's a good word, isn't it? I'm going to have a shifty. I don't know how often you explore this particular uh, tool, if at all, right? the um, sh custom shape tool. But it does, what does really tickle me is the randomness of some, some of the shape collections or the apparent randomness, especially in the legacy set. So the 2019 shapes, one of the revisions, 
You've got some trees, so conifer trees, leafless trees, forests and mountains. Actually, one of those might be really useful in a bit. Lakes and hills, leaves, cactus, roads and streams, spiral shapes, people, emoticons, landmarks, cities, all this sort of stuff like vehicles, la la la. And then you get down to the bottom, flags and helmets. <laughs> I've never tried it. Then you've got <laughs> just <Yeah. laughs> random, random protective headwear section. Brill. As it is, what I want isn't in here, and I don't want to create. Uh, I could pop out to Illustrator, I guess, and make what I want, but I think I'm going to go ahead and use the rectangle tool. to make what I want from here. I'm going to put some bars in to kind of like them. And they're also suggestive of reflection on the water. I'm going to go deep gray with mine. Yeah. And again, I'm going to collect these together. So I think I'll just make a duplicate. Yeah. And another one. And another one. And another one. Sweet. I'm going to make sure they're aligned by selecting all of those and then choosing the distribution options. I'm just going to choose to distribute these um, amongst themselves. I think they were pretty good anyway. As they are, and then I'm going to just join those together. I'm just going to do, be nice and easy and merge them. Whoops, a daisy. Go to the top here and rasterize them. Merge selected, uh, which I forget is not in there. So, how are we doing for time? Well, we've got loads of time. Just <clears throat> really good. I'm just going to have a quick look through the chats. Annika's in. Hi, Annika. Tim also, hang on, this is going to be a joke, isn't it? When he says things like, I also have a Blackberry. All right, okay. It is a joke. It's next to my apple in the fruit basket because <laughs> it's incompatible with my eggs box. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, Tim. <laughs> my eggs box. Actually, it's eggs box. Actually, playing on my eggs box. Yeah. Oh, dear. Brilliant. And, of course, Vehicles and Vehicles 2, the sequel. That's true. In those shapes, there is Vehicles and Vehicles 2. Like someone said, oh, there's a finite amount of shapes you can fit in there, which there isn't. Uh, Steve's last phone before. We're, great that we're talking phones today. Uh, Steve's last phone was before the last phone before his iPhone was a Razor Flip. Wow. Sandrine also has an old phone she wanted to give away to recycling, but the screen is broken and I cannot access the software or wipe everything in there. Electromagnet is what I'm going to say to you, Sandrine. Take it to a scrapyard. And ask him to ask him to give it five seconds on the electromagnet. That will trust me. That will wipe it. Yeah, uh, and it costs twenty five pound for a new screen, which you're not going to pay to give it away. Sad state of affairs. Yes. Um, Oliver has got a load of old Nokia's still. Why are you collecting phones? What are you doing with them? Why is that? You, you're like Sharon. She's got a drawer of random electrical. Like that. I hope I haven't still got the batteries in Oliver because that's a huge fire risk, you know. Old lithium hanging around. And <laughs> Tim says, Of course, it was a joke. I don't have a fruit basket. Oh, I like that, Kevin. That gradient's sweet. It is, isn't it? It's very strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Strong. yeah. Strong. Oliver says, Also, a big hammer will definitely wipe it. Yeah, it might just render some of the re retrievable parts useless. Oh, Oliver, that's the only thing. The, um, you know, or just dismantle it, remove the chip and give it to the recycling. Don't go dismantling phones. They've got precious rare earth metals. 
in there that could be hazardous to your health. <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. Bad stuff, that. Bad stuff. Yeah. Right, again, I'm going to borrow the, um, the basis of this layer's mask to create a mask for these bars just here. Right. I'm going to invert that mask and then I'm going to also get my lasso tool and just augment it with the bits I want. Yeah. So I've got a basher on my table right here. This old Nokia. Can I show yeah. you? Can I show it on the screen? Mm. Yeah, yeah. You remember this one here? Right, see it. Is that a Nokia? Is that a yeah, six yeah. series? Is that a 6610? Couldn't tell you, that's something. Or is it a... Uh, Six, it's... Uh, 6600. Yeah, or a 6620. 6300. Yeah, 6300. 6300, yeah. Look at that, eh? On my desk. Yep. Super good. Do you know, I wish I'd smart objects these lines now. In fact, it's not too late. I'm going to do some undoing. And stepping backwards to where I still had all the rectangles because I don't like their spacing. Right. And then I'll go back to the uh, to the mask thing. Man, I occasionally used to do. Um, a mate of mine used to ask me on occasion to do some driving work with him, chauffeuring, and. Uh, which was all right. It's good money. Yeah. Got to meet interesting people. Yeah. And uh, he worked. He worked with a couple of film studios. And so you were always driving around these film execs and their wives and whatever. And you'd just say, "Oh, he's got a big do on tonight." Do you know? Like I did Henley Regatta with him and just drove out. And that phone reminds me of those sort of things because mm -hmm. once they were in there, that would be all you could do would be sit and play Snake. <laughs> Snake, the classic snake. Snake for absolutely ages because they would just be in there for the whole night. Yeah. Sometimes you'd uh, you'd 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 nip off. You never should nip off, but you'd sometimes did. I remember two other drivers, him, my mate, and um, and another driver jumped into my limo. It's not my limo; it was their limo. But you know what I mean—the limo I was driving. And we drove off into um, Henley to get. Um, to just get some drinks and snacks and stuff. I mean, they did bring a tray round for the drivers, but it was, you know, took ages. So we just went off and got a bit more agency over what we were having. Yeah. And we were at some traffic lights and there was a massive accident right in front of us with a, you know, big, no, nobody was hurt, yeah. you know, but it was quite crunchy. And it just makes you think, because if, if our cars would have been involved in that, we'd have been in deep doo-doo. Yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't have been there, you know. Limo, eh? What's it like driving a limousine? Yeah, it's alright. It's alright. I mean, I've got to be honest. I was, I was a bit apprehensive uh, about it at first, but I mean, the reason he asked. Corners. So, you got, you say got to again. Right out. Sorry. How are you turning those corners of a limousine? Yeah, you have to take corners. I mean, the, the, the car will do it. It's not a problem, but you do have to be mindful of. Um, of where the front end is it's basically steering from the front court driving from the front corner use the front near side corner as your main reference for how you're going to go around the, the thing now we're talking cars <laughs> and stuff and i'm just jumping into here to resolve my uh my issue with these uh rectangles so i've just selected all the layers here and i'm going to transform them all together because they're too chunky so I want to reduce them and then um, resize them from the center like that. Good. And now I've got that. I'm going to take the bottom one down. Here, so get my move tool, take that one down to where it should be. Select all those layers and once more use the um, use the distribute option to spread them out like so. I think that looks a bit area. There we go. And that's why the, ah, that's much more I'm after. How's that looking to you, mate? Very good. Yep. 
I didn't move the mask with the uh, with the object, but I'm not too worried. Do you know what? My dad had a sofa in business for 20 years. Did he? Yeah, he, and he retired last year. He sold all the, he sold his vans in a Viano, sold it all off yeah, just last year. Yeah. Nice. But he did a lot of airport runs, to be fair. A lot of, yeah. Yeah, a lot of, a lot what, of picking airport. up at the VIP gate. Did he, did he, he have did, to he ever did. go to the VIP? Yeah. And he did some um, he did some Royal Ascot and stuff like that. Mm. No, I he, didn't mind it, actually. I thought it was a good, good job. Yeah. Met some good friends, had some good conversations. That's what he said. He said he, was, he, said he became a counsellor. <laughs> he spent so much time yeah. with the clients and they all flowed into him about their life and telling him things I can't tell the wife, you know? You know, you know it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. Tim is mocking me again in the chat. Mate, he's mocking me, Gavin. What's he saying? Yeah, that must have been before your career as an animal detective. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was, Tim. <laughs> it was before my career as an animal detective. Lord, mocking me. You know? Yeah, your dad will. I mean, I did it like, like I say, when uh, when my mate used to just ask me, it's a bit of driving. Yeah. You know, do you want to come along and do this? And it was all right. I I I liked it. I don't think I'd want to do it all the time. Mm. To be perfectly honest, right? But you know, I, I did. Um, it didn't bother me too much. I'm just tuning this mask here a little bit. We're going to try to get a bit more room to pick up some of those stray strands. Ho. So is your dad retired, retired now then? Is that it? Is he? I guess so. Yeah. He, yeah. It's because he's working yeah. well, so he's taking more time to make sure, you know, to look after her from home. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, he hasn't officially retired, but he doesn't need to go out there and graft at the moment. He's late 60s, nearly 70, you know? Yeah. So. I think I'm going to, I'm going to riff off of your gradient business, mate. On him. Oh, I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm already in. <laughs> I'm already in. I'm still a bit bothered about these edges, but I don't know if I should be. That hard line. I did want a hard line there. But hey ho. And this one here, I'm going to duplicate as well because I forgot. Oh no, I haven't done my tree yet. I need to find a tree. So I'm going to be jumping back into Adobe Stock. That's my way of giving Tim a warning that it's basically going to be browser-tastic for the next uh, next moment or two. So you can go full screen. Wow. Going, I guess while I do that. And, uh, so have you got lots of work on at the moment? You're busy, busy, busy. Yeah, bits and bobs, mate. All sorts of yeah. stuff. Yeah, I'm still working on my um, on my NFT stuff as well. Yeah, got a few projects I'm looking to release. Yeah, and that that's pretty much what the Discord is based around. Yeah, wanting to jump into that space and connect with each other and artists collecting, uh, linking with buyers and buyers linking with artists and giving advice on how people can better promote their work. No platforms to use, which currencies to use, you know, it's, you know, it's yeah, yeah. interesting stuff, you know. I like it. So, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm in that space right now. Jason's in the chat. Hi, Jason. Uh, a pantograph. I like driving a pantograph. <laughs> Do you know what a pantograph is? Gav. I have no idea. So, a pantograph is is kind of like a sort of a it's like a trellis, like a sort of a diamond array thing, 
right. where you anchor one end of it and you have a hole that a pencil goes in and then you go to the other end where you have like a tracing scribe and you go around and you could trace things by using this thing i haven't seen a pantograph for absolutely ages i see i see, um, I yeah. see. Mm. Uh, we need to make a composite of tony and all his careers they're not all my careers i've just always done side gigs you know Is it bills to pay and all of that, you know, and illustration and design wasn't the lucrative business it, it now appears to be. Mm. But uh, there we go. Have you, ever, yeah. have you ever sat and wondered how life, what life was like before Photoshop? How they created posters and... Well, I remember, I know what it's like before Photoshop. Oh, did you do it? Yeah. You evolved before Photoshop? Mm. What? Mm. What? Mate, Photoshop wasn't even a twinkle in um, in the eye of anyone at that particular point. So you were creating graphics without Photoshop? Yeah. Go on, take us through the process. Well, it depends what you, what do you want on the poster. Like you would do if you want images, so you'd, you'd still do photo shoots, you'd still do um, photo shoots as you would before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'd and still do all of that stuff. And then you'd have, well, then you'd have to put Ruby lift film on, cut stuff out. It, um, so you would basically make areas that would then be re-photographed to, to drop them out from the background. And they'd have to be screened so you'd get them so they would print because you, you weren't, there was no digital. Digital did not exist apart from the television. And even then, even then actually thinking about it, that was fairly analogue. Um, yeah, and you'd have to assemble artwork. You'd have to have a clean sheet of board on a drawing board. Yeah. You'd wipe over that with some alcohol or petrol to start off with to clean it. Then you'd put some blue, non-repro blue markup around there to show the edges of what you were doing. And then make cut marks, literally, manually, with a rotary. However many millimetres in from the corners. And then you'd, you'd get photomechanical transfers, PMTs. Yeah, so you'd have those made up and all of your text would come in as a PMT. You'd have to specify that first. And if you got it wrong, you'd have to pay for it again. Whoa. So you'd have to do a measure, which is the number of characters on a line. So you'd have to work out the measure. You'd have to choose a font, work out the measure of that font, and then have all the copies set in that way. You'd have to specify things uh, like, I want this bit to be bold, this bit to be bold. And an operator would basically key all that in command line style And then you'd have to glue all this stuff down. Wow. It was... And it was interesting because you'd be you'd be spraying things like spray mount onto the back of stuff in a spray booth that's designed to protect your lungs. But you'd be doing that. Everybody used to smoke back then, so you'd be doing it with a cigarette hanging out your mouth. You'd smoke in the studio. Wow. It was mental. But yeah, no, I did that for a long time, mate, a long time before. I'm just trying to think how long I'd been, how long I'd been doing it. By the time computers arrived, it was at least. At least 12 years, probably more. I still got them skills anyway. I can still do it. Sort that's, of. That's amazing. <laughs> I've, I've still got the kit. But yeah. The man with the 20 metres long LinkedIn bar. I don't put all of my stuff on LinkedIn, Sandry. Tony can't hide anything. I don't see the need to. The uh, side gigs of T. Harmer Esquire. Tony remembers when photographs were first invented. Yeah, I do, Oliver. Only they weren't called photographs then. They were called photo and gravatures. <laughs> My gosh. No, no, I'm joking there, Gavin. I'm being facetious, mate. <laughs> uh, tell Gavin, tell Gavin, I started retouching photos and negatives before any computers capable of doing it was a thing. Yeah, Gavin, you'd have to have dark. If you wanted to be a designer back then, you had to have darkroom skills. So you had to be able to go in and process photographs and use uh, a rostrum camera and a repro camera. You'd have to use all of that stuff. It took you years to qualify. I, I years used, and I, years. I used the darkroom at school for about a year. So yeah. I know what that, I, I even yeah. remember the smell, to be honest with you. I remember the smell. It smells of wee. It's wee. It smells yeah. like wee. Yeah. <laughs> 20 degree wee. <laughs> 
Oh dear. He invented black and white photographic process, but then someone copied his idea and unfortunately it caught on. You are so bad. You're not. One of my colleagues used to do that, soldering under a fume extractor. Do you know what would be a nice segment, Gavin? It'd be, for, it'd be when we're on next time, would be for me to introduce some random element. Yeah. Yeah. And have you guess what it is. In fact, I'm going to dip off camera for just a second and I'm going to retrieve you something because I've just thought of something I can grab, right. which would be funny. So you can still hear me, but you can just see my bookshelves. Oh, yeah, you'll do. Oh, and you'll do. Fun things. <laughs> okay, Gavin. Morning. Can you guess what this is? Uh, I've seen it, but I couldn't tell you, mate. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, no, wait, hold on. Yeah, no, sorry. I, I failed. No. failed me. No. This is an equal spacing divider. Oh yeah. So when you're drawing and yeah. you want to plot lines at a spacing, you would pull them to the desired spacing. And you see these edges? Yeah. They're so you can rule at those points to get your lines in the way they need to be. So how about that? Is that got, you've got a pen on there and a pencil. How do you, how do you get the, the bits on the end? Mm -hmm. It, it, the the Dinoshis are just there. You just have them. Um, they're just there. And there's this one as well. This one's fun. I just picked up... When I went out for one and ended up picking up two. Wow. Do, you know what, do you know what this is? No, mate. Sorry. Sorry, mate. It looks a bit like a compass, but it's actually a proportional drawing scale. So if I wanted to draw something that was in front of me and I wanted to make it larger, yeah, I would line up with these two things to get that height and then draw to the other two, the big end, just here to scale it up. And you would use it. You would just keep putting it up while you were drawing something like from life for real, because that was something else you had to do. Back then you had to be, you had to show your drawing skills. You couldn't just wander along and go, I made this. <laughs> wow. A question. Do you think yeah. That people yeah. are more skilled back then than they are now. Do you think we're less skilled because it's all so easy for us? Mm. Uh, well, some of those skills aren't really necessary anymore because they're like, you know, they've been overtaken by technology, which is just fine. I think people these days are much more readily varied mm. than, um, than perhaps they were um in my day you know there were people who just did, so you started out um when i was doing this stuff you start you know back then you'd start out in paste up yeah. so you'd actually go and work all you people would do was send you to glue things you'd have to glue things to a board all all day that would be your job yeah yeah they'd just call for paste up paste up <laughs> and you'd have to go running along and go yes because <laughs> that's what i spoke when i was like Eight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> glue these up and don't mess it up. Because if you put glue on the edges, that would attract bits of dust and then you'd have to blot all that stuff out. Oh, man, right. So much fun. But anyway, I'm sure everybody's loving the fact that we're talking about the history of <laughs> working in a design studio. Oh, dear. And there he's got, hang on, he's actually got one. Of course he has. Of course I have. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oliver's got smaller ones of those from technical drawing years ago. Different skills. Doesn't mean you can. Yeah, there's no comparison. It's not apple. You know, it's not apple scrapples. And also, Gavin, back in those days, right? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't come from. Lots of people that I studied with came from. You know, they had like parents that. That, that were supporting them and those things. I didn't have any of that. You know, I, I, I had literally had to work my way through it, which is how I've ended up doing so many different jobs. You know, I had to work at the same time as studying. You know, if I didn't have a job in a studio and I went to study, that was meant that I couldn't be in a studio to work. Yeah, so I had to go and do something else in the evenings, you know. It's just crazy stuff. Mm. Mm. 
Thank anyway. you. You are. There you go. Yep. Steve's Steve's ripping me now. Also, you can use that to find the North Star in your Viking longbow. <laughs> anyway, yours is looking beautiful, mate. It really is, honestly. Thank you, sir. I like it. I'm going to make some adjustments to mine here because I did kind of like. So in mine, All right. I'll just show you for a second. I'm just doing some uh, doing some changes here with this circle, this disc that I put in there. Originally in my sketch, I wanted that disc to sit as it is behind, but I now think that what I'm going to do is reduce the density of this mask. So I've targeted the mask in the uh, layers panel and in the properties panel, I'm just going to drag down the mask density here so I can kind of change how that's done. So if I take it all the way off, that's with it all the way off, all the way on, and that's with it all the way on. So I'm heading somewhere towards an in-between space there and I like that, I think. It needs to be a bit more contrasty. But that's where I'm going with mine right now. I'm introducing more of that colour just there okay. <laughs> Doing manual paste up with the blue laundry marker pencils i've got non -re i could lay my hands on a non-repro blue pencil in like less than 10 seconds steve really could <laughs> i don't know why it's there <laughs> you know actually you've watched my stream you've watched me stream before so you know that i draw with them sometimes that's my first color i draw with green red and blue I make changes as I go along. All right, I'm going to bring in another file. I'm going to do what's commonly known as cheating. You getting? You got some trees out here. Okay. Yeah, I went. I went. I, I haven't got exactly what I want in terms of the um, in terms of the tree shapes. So I'm just going ahead and, and picking up a tree from another file, and then I'm going to drop that in, and then try and blend that down with the other. So I'm going to target that layer and then paste. Hmm. Might have to fix that first, actually. I'll go back to where I was. Have you tried out the object finder? Do you use that when you're making selections? The object, what, sorry? The object finder. No, I don't actually know. No. Mm. I've got, I don't know if you can see my screen at the moment, but mine's active right now in this tree document here. So it's a thing that got added in uh, around about max time. And when you pick up the object selection tool, there's a small wheel here in the control strip that you might see rolling around. Right. Okay, because that's when, in fact, if I go back to my selection tool and then go to the object finder, and it already knows what's there, but it analyzes the image if this is checked which it is by default, and you can see that it actually suggests selections that it can make for you. And you can just click, you can do so many different things with those. I'm just going to click though on one of these to load it as a selection. Mm. It's good, eh? Is that, please don't tell me that. Is that new? It is new, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to yeah, say, yeah. I was going to say. So, yeah, yeah. Check find that is actually really good. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I've got the selection there from it. I think I might just do a bit of the old refine edge though on it. Oh, actually, it's already not too bad. I know it's not so quick. Oh, it is bad. It's <laughs> good to know. Hmm. It's useful. It's great if you've got multiple objects on them um, and you maybe want more than one of them. I had to do a thing a little while ago with some of uh, Christmas with gingerbread people. I had sort of gingerbread people in a layout and I wanted to grab um, some of those. Ooh, preset. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to switch the color aware and see if it changes. What I'm getting here, it's not really. Stapler accident finger. Active. Do you know what stapler accident finger is? No. No? So stapler accident finger is the name I gave to the icon that you get when you hover over something that can be scrubbed backwards and forwards. Oh, I see. So when you do that, you get this finger icon with little triangles pointing out the side. And I've called it stapler accident finger. And I think that's where Tim and I first became really good friends. <laughs> 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 because of the mentioning of stapler accident finger See. I remember what, watching him one of the live streams in, in Germany and uh, I'm pretty sure he said it in German he'll correct me at some point I'm sure if I'm, if I'm remembering incorrectly Noise. Noise. I'm cheating. Now it's getting good. Yeah, we've got 10 minutes, 15 minutes left. Something like that. Yeah, round right about that. Yeah. I'm going to do what is commonly known as cheats. I am David. Oh, and Tim did indeed say it in German. I think it was something like Stapler something something. It's probably a probably a complete German word now. I still chuckle when I see the cursor. And it, do you know what, Tim? It still makes me think of you. Because of the fun we had with that particular cursor, it always <laughs> reminds me of you. There you are. Oh, bro, bro moment. There we are. Right, I'm going to tap V on the keyboard to get the move tool. I've got that layer targeted, so I'm going to hold down Shift and Option and tap O to get the overlay blend mode, which isn't working very well for me. And also, uh, because I'm not thinking straight, so let's take that back to normal. Shift, Option, N. And drop that in. I might try clipping it to the layer beneath. Actually, that's not going to work for me either because I do want that top just there. I'm going to turn it into a smart object and adjust it black and white. I'm suggesting that green is probably something I might want to make darker. Yeah, let's see what the edges will be. Yellows, reds can have no effect whatsoever because there really, really isn't any red in there. There is an element of blue, however. Great thing is I can change it as much as I want to uh, from there. So let's try that. And I think they're gentle masking just in that area. Uh, I used the object finder once and it was complete travesty. I haven't used it since. Really, John? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there might also have been, you know, sometimes if things aren't that great in terms of resolution, that's something that can, uh, that's something can affect it. People sometimes bring in stuff that's just too small or is there there's just too much going on remember it's an artificial intelligence that's kind of looking at it and it's been trained to look at certain things so 
It doesn't, it's not guaranteed to work every time, but when it does, happy, happy, happy days. How are they? Oh, look at that. I've worked up for an hour and a half without saving. <laughs> Mate, time has gone live, with, live with GC, this is called. <laughs> and in fact, I'm going to call it Live with GC Feb because you'll be back with us soon, right? I will. I'll be back. Yeah. Which is really good. We've got some good content up for you, lovely, lovely community people. We've got film clubs coming back in march ooh, ooh, ooh. it was actually going to come back in february but uh, due to a personal commitment uh, it can't go back then so we've got film club coming back we've got super duper film club we've got a new member of the film club team joining us probably in april um which is exciting we've got tons of exciting content next week but there's plenty coming along some guests that you've seen before but not for a while uh, coming back to update us on uh, on what they're doing, so there's plenty to be had. Make sure you tune in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at midday here in the UK. Uh, famous movie quotes, I'll be back, and I am the governor. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Coleman, Sarah, Sarah Coleman could be back, yeah. Kind of like, I like it when Sarah, Sarah's seat, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah doesn't have a season. But I think the best season for Sarah to be back is is autumn. Autumn and winter. I think her she's getting in the right groove for that. But yeah, it's not the only work she does, of course. In those uh, genres. Uh, I am making a duplicate of my layer with my lines on. Now, I have unlinked the mask here, Gavin. All right. Um, so that way, the mask stays where it is. And if I move the content, it will move within the you know within the boundaries of the mask. So I'm just going to get my uh, selection tool there. I am going to rotate that around. I want to bring some of those into that sort of region. There. Yeah, I see. I think that kind of works. There we go. And I might actually mask off. So I'm just going to borrow some of the tree's um, shape here. So I'm just going to command click on the tree's thumbnail, which of course loads that as a selection. Yeah. And then I can add that to the mask and see how that works out. So I'm just going to fill that with that. I think, yeah. And of course, all super duper fabulously editable because I've got loads of smart objects and If I go too far down, I'm going to lose what I'm actually after there. Yeah, definitely prefer it here. It does look a bit beardy, but I'm not too worried. I can fix that if I need to. Uh, Sarah's been posting up a storm on Insta. She has. She has. <laughs> you look different today. I'm inviting all the guests. I know. Do you love what I do on my, do to my hair? <laughs> do you guys have a checklist of sorts that you go through when you think you're done? Uh, I don't have a checklist as such. I normally walk away from it personally and come back to it after a bit. And I think, is that the same sort of approach as you, 
Gavin. Do you? One hundred percent. Yeah. 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 I mean, I do. I do make use of the navigator when I'm done. I, um, so I'll just show you that just in the, the community, really, just in case you've not seen it. So the navigator I find to be a very useful panel yeah, because I can zoom in yeah, and then I might walk around the image like so. And, you know, I can see already there on the chin there's something else, something else. So I'd make a note of that. There's some softness there that I'd want to resolve in here and I can just walk around it like that and this is what it, how it goes warts and all as they say mm. like that so I find the navigator really useful and you can go in as much as you need the red rectangle there is shows the things so I can see I've got a few things that need ironing out um just there and that's just misalignment of the mask I think some of that so I'm just going to try moving that right now it is there we go so if I just move those back in, that softness suddenly starts to disappear because it was an effect of the mask. So that's how I do it, John. I walk around and just check those things and, and make notes and then remedy and then walk away. Um, sleeping on it sometimes not a bad idea, actually, if you, if, especially if, if you're working really late. Um, sleeping on it's not entirely a bad idea, especially if you're having problematic things. You come at it with a morning brain. Uh, hit it. I agree. Yeah, Tim walks away, but coming <laughs> coming back is the hard part. Walk away, step on a plane, travel to another country, never come back. Oh, extreme. <laughs> I do that with photos. Walk away when I come back. If I'm not horrified by <laughs> what I've done, then I'm okay. Yeah, we're all pretty much the same, really. Uh, make sure you ignore the piece for a bit. Come back to it and display it either 100% or print size of a print. Printing it out sometimes, you know, shows a load of things. Uh, the bird's eye view in Photoshop where you can quickly zoom out and zoom in again. Yes. Now, just in case you haven't seen the bird's eye view in Photoshop, I'm going to show you very, very quickly. because We've got like three minutes left. I'm going to tap H for my hand tool. And if I press down on that, I don't think I need a key to do that. So if I zoom in like that and then press, oh, I thought that was the trick. Oh, I'm misremembering that. There you go. I thought you could just press and activate it. Maybe not. Well, that used to be a thing, I'm sure. Unless I'm doing it because of the track pad. Let's try it with the starters. Let's go zooming in. And hand tool down. No. No. Interesting. Anyway, there is one. I haven't used it for absolutely ages. So, and that's evident. <laughs> In fact, I was, I was not able to activate it just then. Ah. Anyway, there is one. Uh, zoom like crazy. I think the navigator is just the best answer for it. But anyway, in my own in my own work. Uh, John's going to check out the navigator. Uh, Stephen's saying, not horrified. You have really strict rules. My experience of I doubt posting something because it's too simple, too different. I don't perform very well. Do you know what? These days, it's... Um, oh, of course. Tim's just helped me out. Press and hold H. It's for the spring-loaded business on there. So if you hold H down, that's it. Thank you, Tim. I'd forgotten there. And then you drove that around. So all the while you're holding down the H key, have access to the to the zoom as well so it'll zoom out to the bird's eye view and then zoom in on those areas thank you very much mate i had it's been such a long time since i've used that no i plumb forgotten about it no, don't forget to put your name and copyright in the metadata oh shall we throw that tip in gavin or yeah sure also, it's lovely mate by the way when you are doing that you should go to the file menu and file info Right, and the, at the very least, you should enable copyrighted and put your copyright notice in there. On a Mac, you can type Alt G to get the copyright symbol, you know, or Option G, uh, really. And then you might have seen that my my name came up immediately there. Right, so it's got like, oh, oops, I put the euro sign. <laughs> Give me money. <laughs> <laughs> oh gee and there's tony harmer underneath so that goes in that's at the very least least you should do right you should also put the year of creation 
in there as well just to be tight on it and any other information you might want to put in there such as um, uh, no unauthorized usage all of those things you can even create a metadata template to apply that quickly yeah, so you should put in the names and all that stuff and then that's saved with the file and any descendant files of it. So if you make an export thing, it's already got the copyright info in there, which is useful. There we go. Ah, oh, Sean was kicking in with the shortcut as well. Thank you very much. Um, let's get Gavin's on screen and fill up the screen now. This is lovely, lovely, lovely. Nice, mate. I really like that. Really nice. Thank you, sir. Job done. I'll try your method, I think. I'll give your method a go. The um, yeah, Sandra uses the navigator as well. So people enjoyed it, I think. Uh, so that's really good. Uh, you'd be horrified to see that nearly 100% 100 of the photographers I work with don't do it. Well, it's their own loss, uh, Sandra, if they don't put that in. Yeah, copyright URL, hypergroovy.com. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Just there. Oh, and David is giving us the Windows shortcut um, for the... Uh, copyright symbol which is alt plus zero one six nine there you go um yeah and if you type bracket c bracket on a mac it auto completes to the copyright symbol yeah but alt g or option g so much quicker uh there we go so uh, that's it i think mate we're really good uh annika saying thanks to the stream well thank you for coming along annika and great stuff tony gavin and tim uh, thanks so much, Gavin. Great. And Tony, great stream. Uh, and there you go. Lightroom adds it on import. David Glissman showing some keyboard symbols. Awesome. And uh, yeah, there we are. Fabulous, mate. Well, I look forward to the next time I see you. Always. Yeah. But, you know, on here, be grand. Good. Yep. And I think for now, uh, we're done. So uh, take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your week. Check out the schedule for what's going on next week. Okay, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care now. Bye-bye. Yeah.